Okay, welcome to the video number four on traffic assignment, which is your module six traffic assignment. So here we are going to talk about a method called stochastic assignment. It's a method of method of traffic assignment, stochastic. So what are the theoretical basis for this is if you have two routes between a zone A and B not everything will go only on, on on one link so some people are going to use so it's going to be probabilistic which is hence the term stochastic comes I think uh, they are interchangeably used probable probabilistic stochastic they're interchangeably used so that's essentially uh, that's essentially what it is. Um, if you have travel time associated with each path, of course, every path will. So that travel time could determine the utility of that path. So if you have, you know, the utility uh, theory. We talked about logit models in more choice. If you extend the same logic, travel time as a utility or disutility depending on which way you want to put it and logit model formulation could give you a solution for traffic assignment problem and that's what we are studying here's a the formulation is very simple you already seen it it's very simple if you can associate a utility with each path say this is for path 1 and you can associate utility for path 2 and then if there is a third path you will have u3 so the probability of going by path 1 will be uh, exponent of e path 1 a utility of path 1 plus sigma of all the exponents of all the competing paths you've seen this before that's exactly what you will is a simple example a to b three routes seven minutes eight minutes nine minutes travel times route one route two route three and the simplistic assumption will be u1 utility of route one is negative of its travel time what why we are putting a negative value uh, that's because it's 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 a measure of disutility the higher the value it's more penalized. So if you put a negative value, it, it is indicative of this, this utility. So we use this to do the stochastic assignment along these paths. Oh, by the way, uh, in earlier slide, it says there are 100 trips between A and B. So that's what you need to assign. So you're all too familiar with this. Travel time as a utility of path 1 is minus 7. In the previous slide we have indicated that utility of path 2 is minus 8. So you go through this, you have the probabilities of 66.5%. So if you multiply that with number of trips between A and B you get 66.5 might as well call it 67 the same multiply with 100 you get 25 and here this guy gets 9 trips so your traffic assignment on this network is this guy got 67 trips route 2 got 25 trips and route 3 got 9 trips. Simple enough, right? Let's see the complications. What are the complications? Oh, sorry. Before we get to the complications, this here is a challenging question. I introduce you to uh, a regular trip a fellow I know makes. Route 1 for him is 14 minutes. The other route takes... 15 minutes 
so sorry don't need no need to write there so 15 minutes and the third route takes uh, here third route takes 16 minutes so given this and we just worked out this problem correct you got this route has 67 percent this route has 25 percent and this route has nine percent so can you quickly tell me what is going to be the choice probabilities of this fellow on these three routes? What is the probability of his choosing this route? Very simple. If you look at these uh, travel times, they're 14, 15, 16 minutes, 7, 8, 9 minutes. That's why I deliberately chose this. Adding a constant to utility functions is not going to change the data, change the property of the uh, the choice probabilities at all. So essentially, if you if you subtract seven from this each one of the travel times, your problem is that essentially reduces to what you just solved, and your probabilities on this particular real real world scenario going to be 67, 25 and 9. It's that simple. So now advantages and disadvantages. It's very realistic. This is how things work in real life. But competing path identification, who, if you look at those three paths I said, those are only three paths just Google gave me. But I know there are at least seven different ways I could get here. And I do get, oh, I gave away who that is. Well, never mind. No. Seven different ways you can uh, use that. Uh, I, I can come there. So which one of them are really my competing alternatives? It, it may be for the traveler, they know what those competing alternatives are. But to develop a algorithm that picks up that goes into the traveler's mind and finds them, it's impossible. And once you identify those paths, you have to find a utility function and then do a lot of uh, multinomial formulation, etc., etc. Computational complexity is going to be horrendous. So this is not often done. Well, some of the new techniques are using this, but, uh, you know, it's not very often done. Eventually, probably if, uh, a couple of decades from now, everybody uses it. I don't know. All right, so that is where our video number three ends. Oh. All right, this is where our video number four ends. Um, I'll see you in video number five.